You know, we have so much history living at the Gilcrease Museum. I can't begin to tell you how much is alive there, and you need to go by. Our director, or the director of the Gilcrease, is here now, James Pepper Henry. Welcome, my friend. Thank you. It's good Appreciate to have it. you. You come here from Phoenix? Yes, most recently from Phoenix, Arizona, the Heard Museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been at Gilcrease for about 10 months now. You know, I heard about the Gilcrease long before I came. And everything I ever heard uh, didn't measure up to what all you've got. My word, it's, I mean, it just, it, it, there, there's so much there to see. Uh, it's such a collection. Uh, and a lot, you probably need more room, don't you? We do. Um, I have to tell you, it's a pleasure and an honor to be the director of the Gilcrease Museum. And my family's from Oklahoma originally. Uh, my family's been here now for almost seven generations in Oklahoma. I'm a member of the Ka Nation mm -hmm. uh, up near the Ponca City area. So your family. And, yes, and uh, uh, also of Mus Muskogee Creek descent, and Thomas Gilcrease, the founder of the Gilcrease Museum, mm -hmm. is also Muskogee mm -hmm. Creek. But the Gilcrease Museum is one of those jewels that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, and the Gilcrease has a great reputation nationally and internationally, but there are a lot of folks in our own area that don't realize what a treasure the Gilcrease Museum is. And so uh, it's our mission to really um, see that the Gilcrease reaches its true potential. It's, we call it, it we say the Gilcrease Museum. It's yeah. really much more than a museum, isn't it? It is. Um, in 2008, we entered into uh, a partnership with the University of Tulsa to manage the museum. And the university has done a great job mm -hmm. in supporting the museum and is in, in the last uh, several years since 2008 has provided more than $60 million in funding, including the construction of the new Helmrich Center for American Research. And that, that facility houses some of the most important documents in our country's history. Um, a lot of folks don't realize that the Gilcrease Museum has one of the only other handwritten signed copies of the Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. We have one of the only other copies of the Articles of Confederation. We have one of only about a dozen copies of the Emancipation Proclamation signed by Abraham Lincoln. That's just a, a small example of some of the great historical documents that we have uh, at the Gilcrease Museum. You know, we taped uh, an interview with uh, Mr. Jim Halsey in the first segment of this show. Uh, Jim is married to Manisa uh, Halsey, who was Manisa Crumbo, who was right. the daughter of Woody Crumbo, who was who's obviously a master of the five tribes, and is also hanging in the Gilcrease as well, but yeah. was a buyer for Tom many years ago. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Thomas Gilcrease and Woody Crumbo were good friends. I think Woody Crumbo at one point was an artist in residence at the Gilcrease yeah, Museum, was. and we have quite a collection of his artwork, but uh, Woody Crumbo introduced Thomas Gilcrease to many other artists that are also in the collection. And I, I'm not sure, but I, I think Woody Crumbo may have introduced Thomas Gilcrease to Joseph Henry Sharp, who uh, is one of the great uh, American painters. Oh, so much talent. Yeah. We, as folk who live here, don't realize I think what all is necessary in terms of support for the museum. It's not just enough to volunteer. Mm -hmm. You guys, you know, have to reach out. You've got to beat the drum for the dollar, as, as it were. And yeah. I think there's a big mm -hmm. meeting tonight with the city council. There is. Uh, the Gilcrease Museum uh, is owned by the city of Tulsa and it happens to be the most valuable asset that the city owns and we don't like to put uh, dollar values on things that are invaluable or priceless, mm -hmm. but somehow insurance companies can figure out a way to put a value on oh. things. And, and, <laughs> uh, tell me about it. <laughs> uh, but our last uh, valuation of the collection was somewhere between two and a half and three billion dollars worth of artwork. That's at hard the to believe, but it's it, right it, here. It, it is. I mean, how can you put a value on the Declaration of Independence? But um, but we have priceless works of art and uh, archival documents at the Gilcrease. And yes, absolutely. And uh, um, But about 97% of what we have 
is not on display because we don't have the space for it. Mm -hmm. And we compare ourselves a lot to Crystal Bridges down the road in Bentonville, Arkansas. And, and that's, if you've ever been to Crystal Bridges, they have an incredible facility. Mm -hmm. They don't have quite the collection that we do at the Gilcrease. Of course, nobody has quite the collection that we do at, sure. at the Gilcrease Museum, but they've invested quite a bit in their facility and their visitor amenities, including their grounds. And it has become a, a great destination for people uh, from all over the country. Crystal Bridges has been in business for about four years and they're averaging about half a million visitors a year. About half of those visitors come right through Tulsa, Oklahoma to go to Crystal Bridges and we need to capture those folks. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and having a facility where parts of it are 60 years old, you have an aging uh, uh, HVAC system, uh, other parts of the, of the building are just tired and we need to refresh the museum and bring in some of the amenities that people expect now uh, for a visitor experience and, and really work in capturing those folks that are, are going to other places but also attracting people from all over the country and all over the world to come and see this incredible collection. I know when Alice Walton launched that project there were folks, New York critics, who were very harsh, very harsh. Uh, and I think one uh, even went so far as to say, why would you build a world-class museum in the center of Hicksville? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we fly over that place. And I thought, you know what, fella, you need to come to Tulsa and see what mm -hmm. we've got here. Is there any chance that there could be cross-promotion between the Gilcrease uh, and Crystal Bridges? Uh, absolutely, and we've been talking about that, too. And But Tulsa, in and of itself, you know, the Gilcrease is... is I, in my opinion, it's a national treasure, but we have some other great gems here in Tulsa. Philbrook Museum is an incredible museum. Uh, the Tulsa Zoo uh, gets close to half a million visitors a year. Uh, uh, the aquarium, there are so many great cultural activities and attractions in Tulsa that uh, we really should be promoting Tulsa as a destination, and the Gilcrease can be mm -hmm. one of the anchors for that experience you bet. when people come to Tulsa. What's, what's happening then? Explain a little more for me, if you would, about you know, going after the vision funds yeah. from the city. Yeah, well, first of all, um, as I mentioned, the Gilcrease Museum is owned by the city of Tulsa, and it's, it's an asset that really has never reached its full potential. And so by getting a little bit of help from the voters in April, we're hoping to make those major upgrades to the facility. One, one thing we don't have is a large changing exhibition space. So it's one thing to build something, you know, uh, like the Field of Dreams, if you build it, they will come. Well, they'll come once, but you have to have great programming to go along with a great facility. Certainly. And that's our goal is to not only showcase some of the, the great works of American art that the Gilcrease has in its collection, but also bring in some of the great traveling exhibits that are traveling around the world. And there isn't any venue in Oklahoma or within our region that has a large enough venue to showcase some of these great traveling shows. And I, I use a couple of examples. Uh, uh, King Tut, for example, if we wanted to have the, the King Tut exhibit, uh, we would need at least... 13 or 14,000 square feet to, to showcase mm -hmm. a show like that. Imperial Tombs in China is another large show over 12,000 square feet. Our largest changing exhibition space is only about 3,800 square feet. Holy Toledo. So, the, so we're limited on what we can bring to and Tulsa. there's so much out there that could be brought in. From around the world, all, well, all over gosh, the world. we'll all have our fingers crossed for you. Listen, I want to I want to thank you for taking time to come in, and I want to remind the folks at home uh, that, uh, and I believe we've got it here, uh, that uh, coming up uh, Friday night, you'll be able to see the Gilcrease Museum, America's Story. That's right here on Rogers State Public Television the, uh, at 7 p.m. Do not miss this, because it, particularly if you're new to this part of the world, and there are a lot of folks who've been here for a while who may not be familiar with the Gilcrease, and it would give you a wonderful opportunity to kind of get a handle on what's going on out there. And if you have youngins, gosh, you need to take them by. Hey, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. We want to do this again. Well, hopefully we'll have more to talk about if uh, we're successful with the Vision 2025 uh, we'll sales tax All extension. across our fingers <laughs> and our eyes and our headlights. Uh, let's see. That's uh, want to remind you of that one. Then also we've got coming up the, uh, uh, I believe it's the Hall of Fame documentary 
we reached agreement with uh, uh, the state uh, television, uh, Rogers uh, State Television reached an agreement with OETA, and you'll be able to see the Oklahoma Hall of Fame uh, presentations, and that will be Friday night at 8 p.m., so be sure and join us for that. And I think we're about out of time, are we not, young men? I think we are. <laughs> All right. Thank you, folks, for joining us. We'll see you next time.